Hi everyone. In the last video, we talked a little bit about uh, things like acceleration and top speed. In this video, I want to focus more on the actual handling of the car, so things like steering and uh, forward and lateral friction and stuff like that. Uh, one, one thing I did was I actually added these walls here. The reason for this is that I find that when you're when you're tuning things like handling, it's a lot easier to get a, a good feel for it if you actually have some frame of reference. So just adding a few of these walls can can be useful. Uh, and another thing I want to point out is that this is kind of the more subtle uh, area of, of tuning. So a lot of this, you'll really have to just uh, play around with yourself so you can get a feel for it. Or I'll exaggerate the values just so that you can see the effect. But it's really, this is one of these things that designers spend hours on trying to get just right. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, the first thing that I want to point out is you might notice if you, if you hold the acceleration button, so I'm just accelerating the whole time, and then I start turning left, and then I, I let go, but I keep accelerating. The car totally steers out of control. And uh, the reason for this is that I'm actually using an all-wheel drive car. So if you go to your car setup and you look up uh, differential, you'll see that we're using a uh, limited slip four-wheel drive. Uh, there's a lot of different advantages and disadvantages to all of these. Uh, I'm not really going to get into it, but the, the reason why it's, it's slipping like that is that as you're turning, you're accelerating and you're actually getting power from the front and the back. So uh, for, for the sake of the tutorial, just to keep it a bit simpler, I'm going to use front wheel drive, which has a more uh, simple and like predictable handling. So now you'll see if I, if I start again, so I'm accelerating all the time, I start turning left, I now keep going forward because the power is only going to the front. So uh, this isn't necessarily better or worse, it just depends what kind of effect you're going for. Uh, okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the wheels. So you, you might remember in the last video, or the first video, we added these back and front wheels. And we didn't really talk about any of these settings. Uh, for now, I just want to talk about the, the tire settings. So you see there's this uh, lateral stiff value and long stiff value. And all these really do is they just determine how much uh, forward and lateral force we're going to apply in the car based on the uh, amount of friction that's acting on the tires. So uh, we'll start with the long slip because it's sort of the easiest to understand. So if I change this to something like 3000, and it's important to, usually when you're trying stuff out, you want to change it on both the front and the back. So we'll change both of these to 3000. And uh, you'll see that if I'm going forward now, uh, there's this graph here for tire long slip. So this is actually the value that we're going to be multiplying by 3,000. So uh, there isn't really any mystery to it. It's just 3,000 is a bigger number, so you're going to accelerate faster and have a slightly higher top speed because you're applying a, a bigger force on the car. Um, so I'm actually going to change it back to 1,000 because uh, I, I like that better. But I want to show it to you with the, the lateral slip. So uh, this is kind of hard to see, so I'm going to make it very exaggerated. So I'm going to set the lateral slip to a very small value of 1. So now what's going to happen is if I actually start the car, you'll see that it's sliding all over the place. And this makes sense because as the car is uh, drifting to the side, there's lateral friction, but I am not applying a very big force for that. So obviously, like you wouldn't want to, unless you're in some kind of very special game, you wouldn't want this sort of behavior. But uh, it shows you how you can play with the different values. Uh, another thing that's kind of interesting is you can get uh, cool effects by having different values for the front and the back. So, for example, if I set the back to be 17 and the front to be 1, what's going to happen is the car, uh, the the back of the car is going to have more say than the front of the car. So you can see that as I stop turning. The back of the car kind of yanks the front back uh, to the way that it wants to go. And, and this makes sense because the front of the car has very little force applying uh, from lateral friction. So uh, depending on what kind of effects you want, you can get uh, lots, lots of different stuff uh, just by playing around with these. Um, yeah. Another thing that uh, I want to talk about is the ability to control rotation uh, by using the, the inertia tensor of the car. So if we set this back to, to being one, the car uh, rotates very easily and slides around. But you can actually change this. So if you go to the car and you search for inertia, you have this thing called an inertia tensor scale. And all this really does is it just 
describes how hard it is to rotate the car along a certain axis. So if we look at the z-axis, which is the, the up vector, and we set it to something like 5, it means it's going to be very hard to rotate the car. So now you can see that the car is not really rotating, but it's still sliding around uh, laterally quite a bit. And this makes sense because we still don't have a lot of uh, lateral forces, but the inertia is, uh, the, the moment of inertia is much higher. Uh, so that's just another, another way that you can get different types of effects. Um, another thing to, to look at, let me just change this back to something sane. Uh, so if I go back to this, uh, and I look for a steering curve. So the way the steering curve works is, if we look at the front wheel, there is a steer angle of 70. But when you're driving a car, as it gets faster, it actually gets harder and harder to, to steer the, the full amount. So the steering curve lets you simulate this. So it's uh, speed versus how much you can steer. So at zero speed, we can do full uh, one uh, times 70, so you get 70 steering. At something like you know uh, 20 kilometers an hour, you only get 90%. At 120, you only get 70%. So uh, I'll just make this very exaggerated. So if I uh, set this to 10 and 0, then once I hit 10 kilometers an hour, I'm not going to be able to, to steer at all. So now if I go back in here, you, you can see that I actually maybe that's a little uh, it's a little too extreme. So let's make this like 30 and 0. So now if I start, you can see that I, I can still turn but once I get going a little bit faster, now it doesn't matter what I do, I can't, I can't turn. So this is just another thing that you can use to, to tweak uh, the, the difficulty of, of turning. Um, yeah. one, one last thing I want to look at is the uh, slightly more advanced feature is the uh, lateral stiff max load. So the way that this works is when you're, when you're turning, there's actually uh, a different way that the lateral forces are going to be applied. So if the car is moving very, very fast, at some point it will have a very hard time applying the lateral forces. So that's what this value does. So if I actually make this smaller, it means that once I start going fast enough, the car will have a harder time uh, providing lateral force. Now this might sound similar to the, the steering curve, but it's actually different in that, uh, you know, I could still turn the, the wheel and steer like full 70 degrees to the right, but the amount of forces that I'm going to get are different. So this is kind of hard to, to actually illustrate, but um, let's make something very obvious. So if I do like 0.5 and 0.5, I'm actually not sure this will be very clear. So you can see that at slow speeds I can move just fine, but if I start going fast enough, uh, I, I have more lateral force. This is something that you'll probably want to play around with a little bit more. It's, it's a, a bit hard to uh, convey. And if you actually are interested, you can look in the, the physics documentation, uh, PhysX documentation. They actually have a, a whole explanation on how these two values work together. Um, so that's it for, for handling of cars. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit about springs and uh, some more moment of inertia stuff. And uh, that's it. So hope uh, I answered some of your questions. Uh, see, you, see you soon. Bye.